I maybe drove around for half an hour before the batteries were, you know, pretty low. Uh, I can charge them better. I'll have to charge them to a higher voltage. They are very used batteries though, so I don't know how much energy they'll be able to store. I did start emailing places, you know, requesting possible battery sponsorship. You know, I did the same thing with the solar panels and somehow miraculously got super lucky with that from those Solbion guys who sent me these. Oh, that was so nice. Like this boat wouldn't, wouldn't be working if I didn't get those. I wouldn't have made this boat without those actually because um, I can't make this boat with the heavy solar panels. The lightweight ones make all the difference. Anyway, maybe I can get some, some battery sponsors too. Some brand new batteries. That would be sweet. In the meantime, well, I'll see if I can email some other battery places. And then I'll work on charging these ones better too. I might have to pop these ones open and in inspect every cell individually to check if any are bad. All right, let's figure out what that error message actually is on the speed controller. There's two green blinks, three red blinks. High throttle over range. High throttle over range. Okay, what the heck do we do with that? Uh, I'm getting a lot of blank pages after that. I don't care about the warranty. What do I do? Arr. All right, that's the error right there. Note one, note one. The throttle could be faulty. I think it's okay. I did check it before I put it in. Wiring connectors, that should all be fine. I just did it. Incorrect throttle set in the program. Okay, I'll have to check that. Otherwise, clear throttle auto calibration and try again. Okay, clear the throttle auto calibration. And check the throttle setting. Okay. Alright, I just spent about half an hour going through all the settings, resetting the auto calibration, do blah, blah, testing and testing and testing, still doing the exact same thing. I wish I could just get into the programming and just say, if the thing, you think it's too high, just stay at 100%, just, anyway. So, uh, what's happening is, when I turn the throttle, everything works great, works great, works great, and then just as it gets to the top, like as far as you can turn it, it shuts off. So just like the last little bit. So I think I'm just going to physically prevent it from going that far. I checked on the uh, monitoring thing on the computer, and it is actually getting to 100% just before the throttle is turned all the way. And then you go a little bit past that, and then it just shuts off. That's so silly. So here's what it's doing. I got my throttle here. Accelerate, no problem. Turn a little more, no problem. And then just as I get to the end, it uh, over throttle whatever errors. So if I go back, just a little bit. so I could just put like a physical thing in here to stop that little metal pin that's part of the spring stop that from moving or maybe I'll open it up and see if there's some way of you know limiting how far it rotates seems like such a silly error to have like hey you've pushed the gas pedal too far so now we're gonna completely deactivate the thing instead of just being like oh we'll just stay at 100% throttle even though you've gone past that I guess I could check the resistance on the little potentiometer in the thing when you see if the resistance is doing something weird when you get all the way up, but whatever, I don't, I don't care. I just want it to work, so let's see if I can open it up. All right, handful of stuff. I should be able to do something with that. There is a second thing I want to do that's pretty simple. That's what's in this bag. First, let me fix this simple problem. There's a blocking diode I want to take out. Now normally, in a system like this, if I had multiple solar panels charging the batteries, the solar panels would be connected to each other. So if one solar panel is in the shade and the other one's in the sun, the sun one can push electricity backwards through the, the shaded one, possibly damaging it. So you put a, a diode, which is like a one-way street for electricity. You put diodes 
uh, in line with each solar panel. But right now, there's only one solar panel connected to this, so it doesn't need the diode. Uh, the reason I want to take the diode out is because the diode kills a bit of your voltage. And my solar panel is already kind of low to charge these batteries. So if I take the diode out, I'll get a bit more voltage, be able to charge the batteries a little higher. Here's mud. And I, I made my wires short, like there's no extra space to take this out and plug these together. So I'm just going to insert a Y connector to take up the space. Okay, 27.2 volts with the diode. Huh, <laughs> 27.4 without it. Okay, that's not a big difference. Hopefully it's a bigger difference when there's full sun out. I'll charge the batteries up a little more. We'll see how much more. Let's see about opening this silly thing. Oh, I need like special six side screwdriver thing. Well, nothing useful on that section. Where's that back up? All right, I ended up taking this apart, moving the gears so it's offset by one gear tooth, like skipping a gear basically, so it doesn't get all the way to full throttle. I also reversed the direction of the thing and took the spring out, so uh, that way. I can mount this wherever I want. I don't have to hold it all the time. Oh, and because I skipped a tooth, I may be losing a tiny bit of high-end throttle, but like a negligible amount. And I should be able to correct for that in the programming if at some point I feel like it. All right, let's see how ergonomic that is. Great! Easy to reach, up nice and high where it's not going to get splashed. And now I have a free hand! Oh, marvelous! Alright, now recharge. Oh, I guess some sun would help with that.